and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information and today we're going to have a look at the three most important pages in IMPA which gives you a window into how well your engine's running and if you've got any impending problems such as vacuum leaks and misfires problems which might damage the catalytic converter for instance so I've got an old laptop with IMPA on it used a one-click install very simple got a USB to OBD2 adapter and from that it goes to an OBD2 to 20 pin BMW diagnostic connector so here we go this lot came from BM cables but I've got exactly the same stuff from Cable Shack and a few other bits and bobs as well from other companies they all do the same thing as lot the hardest bit is getting input installed on the laptop to start with although it's a lot easier these days right let's fire up the engine as I say just above freezing so we're going to be producing a lot of steam today right let's get input running that's yeah, sounding fine so far I can't hear any misfires here we go in power and um, we're doing this diagnostics on my E31 840Ci with a 4.4 V8 engine, that's the M62. So F2 for older models. Uh, this routine's the same for any engine in the BMW range. There's slight differences, but um, it's more or less the same. Okay, so DME 5.2 for the M62 engine, as we would on a 540 or a 740. Exactly the same routine. First thing we do, just check the error memory, just in case we've got a, a sort of major problem. Uh, so we read the error memory with F1, and you never know what you're going to find. We don't have check lights in the UK, so there we go, no errors found, which is good news. I haven't put diagnostics for about 18 months, so good news, nothing serious wrong. But let's see if we've got any sort of impending failures. Lots of steam, but the engine's running. So here are the three most important pages. Um, read status, F5, and this will bring us to the main page for reading the status of the engine. We'll start with analog values one, and that includes the primary and secondary sensors. Um, first thing worth saying is the battery voltage must be above 12.6. Anything below that, that means your alternator isn't running correctly, and you're not gonna get decent diagnostics. Um, because low battery voltage will cause misfires and all sorts of problems. Right, engine speed around about 900 RPM has just been started. Um, stay up there for a while. Um, coolant temperature is starting to rise, about 21 degrees now. Um, that's fine, so it shows the coolant temperature sensor is working fine. Um, next thing is the air intake temperature, showing 7.5, which is about 5 degrees above what it should be, but that's quite normal. Throttle potentiometer at idle is about half a volt, so that's perfectly normal as well. Right, two values which give people palpitations for the total air consumption and the needed air IS controller. Um, they've got exclamation marks by them, but that's normal, it's because it's cold. And they didn't make the sliders big enough for a 4.4 litre engine. Probably did them for a 1.8 litre or something. But they'll go back to around about 20 kilograms uh, of air per hour at some point. Right? But you can stop the fan with your hand now as we warmed up slightly. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, coolant hoses are starting to warm up. Let's have a look at the Lamber sensors. You know, the oxygen sensors in the exhaust pipe. Um, as you can see, when the engine's cold, they don't do anything at all. So when people say, I've got an idle problem, I think it's my Lambda sensors. No, probably not. They don't do anything when the car's first started. So that one's sitting there doing nothing, stuck in the middle, about half a volt. Um, nothing moving at the moment because the engine's too cold. But there are a number of values you can look at, which is the adaptation values, which are shown here, minus five and zero, on one bank, minus three and one on the other. And I'll come back to those at some point and explain how important they are to tell how well your car is running. In fact, they're the most important values of all of them. Right, it's been a few minutes now, so everything's boiling hot. Ooh, I sped up the gauge a bit, and I've sped up this screen a bit as well. 
and now you can see things are moving around. That means the Lambda sensors are sensing the amount of oxygen in the exhaust and are now giving us some sensible readings. So we'll have a look at the left-hand bank on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, so that's the Lambda sensor in the exhaust and it whizzes backwards and forwards as it should do as the mixture becomes slightly lean, slightly rich. And this is an in interesting one. This is the integrator and that should sit around about zero. Right, a few minutes later, engine speeds drop to about 700 RPM. Air intake temperature, 20 degrees. It's soaked up some of the heat from the engine. And here we go, that's within limits now. Well, it is until you put the air conditioning on and then you'll find that it pops off the end of the scale again. As I say, perfectly normal, don't worry about it. It's about 20 kilograms per hour when the engine's running fine and the air conditioning is off. And you notice the air engine speed's raised up by about 20 RPM. And as the evaporator reaches temperature, it'll drop back down to 690 and the total air consumption goes back down to around 20. So everything perfectly all right there. That gives a good indication the engine is running quite efficiently. So here we go, here's the additive values and we look at the left hand side and we've got um, adaptation additive minus four, adaptation multiplicative zero. Now the minus four gives us an indication that we've probably got a very slight misfire on one or two cylinders and that's why the mixture is becoming quite rich or slightly rich. I mean these, we're talking very small amounts and so the adaptations have reduced the amount of fuel put into the engine to compensate for that. Still steaming away nicely. Right, third screen we're going to look at is smoothness, or it's actually the roughness of the engine. It's the reliability of each cylinder to accelerate the flywheel. And if it accelerates it differently, one camshaft cycle to the next, then the value goes up. And we can see that cylinders three and four are slightly higher than the rest but well within limits, especially for an engine that's done 163,000 miles. We could look at them and say, well, cylinders three and four have got a manifold leak, but we know from the adaptations that that bank was already slightly rich, which means more likely that they're small misfires, all from the read status page of IMPA, and that gives us a great idea of how well the engine's running and if we're going to run into any problems. Now, have a look at the link at the bottom where I'll explain how adaptations work uh, because it's much too long-winded to describe here. Uh, much better have it written down. I'll do another video that will show how adaptations work. But that gives you a good indication of what we look for on IMPA, the three most important pages. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with a new video.